A few weeks ago, I already showed you how one of the latest releases from SV Boni performed this MK127, a Rumak Maksutov with a 127mm aperture and a 1500mm focal length when photographing the moon. In that video, I got some spectacular results with this telescope. But in that video, I also told you that this telescope comes standard with a 0.65 reducer. Because, in theory, it would allow us to also try deep sky astrophotography at a focal length of no less than 975 mm. And that's exactly what we're going to test in this video. My name is Luis Miguel Azorin, and I welcome you once again to Natural Portraits. Well, I already have all the equipment set up and ready to start the astrophotography session. As you can see, I have mounted the SV Boney MK127 on the ZWO AM5 mount. As the main camera, I have attached the ZWO ASI 294 color. I have installed the 0.65 reducer because it comes standard with this telescope along with the extension tubes to achieve the necessary back focus for proper focus with this setup. And I'm going to control everything with the ZWO ASI Air. So the first thing I'm going to do is focus the setup. Let's take a test image to see how our focus is. We're not too far off, so let's fine tune the focus. Alright, we've more or less got the focus point, so now I'm going to do the polar alignment and we'll start the session. Polar alignment is done, so now we're ready to start the astrophotography session. And the target for this session is a very special galaxy. It's the galaxy NGC 7331. It's a beautiful spiral galaxy, which is also located very close to the galaxy cluster known as Stefan's Quintet, a group of colliding galaxies that are interacting with each other. I actually photographed this same region last year with the SV Boni SV550, a 122mm aperture triplet. However, right now, this galaxy, NGC 7331, is showing a supernova very close to its core. So in this session, we're going to photograph this galaxy field and capture this supernova. Let's take a look at the field we have. There we have the galaxy NGC 7331, which is the largest galaxy shown in the field. And right next to it, we have Stefan's Quintet, that cluster of galaxies that are colliding and interacting with each other. So we'll frame it roughly around there and send the equipment over. Well, there we have it already. The frame is centered, and if we take a two-second exposure, there we have the frame, and we can already see the galaxy with the supernova very close to its core. Spectacular. Also, the stars look very sharp to me. A really great image could come out of this. I'm going to start the auto-guiding, and we'll take a first test shot. Well, here we have that first image of this galaxy which honestly shows some very interesting detail. We can clearly see the structures of the galaxy's spiral arms, we see the core, and we can clearly see the supernova in a slightly bluish tone, off to one side. Over here, on this side of the image, we have Stefan's Quintet. We can see it clearly there, we can see those interacting galaxies. And well, some things I notice about this telescope when doing deep sky observations. 
We can clearly see that it has considerable vignetting. We can see it in all the corners. They are much darker than the central part. This is something we already expected from a telescope with these characteristics, since the secondary mirror, as we saw in that other video, is held by a cell that's in the middle of the meniscus. In this design, the Rumak Maksutov, well, it's not as large as we would like. And there's a possibility that with sensors larger than this one, right now I'm working with a micro four thirds and possibly with larger sensors. We're going to get much more vignetting than what we can see in this image. Also, if we zoom in on the image, we can see that the stars aren't quite as perfect as we would like. The stars don't have that super pinpoint shape we're used to. For example, in telescopes like refractors, we see that the stars show a slight distortion, especially in the corners. That distortion is much more noticeable. Here we can see the upper right corner, how the stars aren't round, and in the upper left corner as well. We also have that same distortion, and the stars aren't round. Similarly, in the lower corners, we can see that there's a quite visible coma in both corners. But even so, I find it interesting that with a telescope whose design has usually been purely for planetary observation, we can still do deep sky astrophotography. So what I'm going to do is reframe the image because I want Stefan's quintet to be more integrated into the picture. I'm going to shift this main galaxy a bit to one side. In short, I'm going to reframe the whole image a little and then we'll start an astrophotography sequence that we'll process later. And let's see what we can ultimately achieve with a telescope of these characteristics in a deep sky session using the stock reducer. All right, the framing has been readjusted and the sequence has started. For now, I've only started 12 exposures, each 300 seconds long, one hour of integration. And in this case, I don't have an automatic focuser, so I'll have to manually readjust the focus throughout the entire session. My plan is to capture at least two hours of integration, but if I can get three hours for this framing, even better. So what I'll need to do is keep readjusting the focus during the capture sequence. I'll be checking the focus point in the IZIR interface to see how the focus point is doing. And if I don't need to adjust it during the capture sequence, what I'll do is readjust it every time I complete an hour of integration. So one hour of integration, I readjust the focus and then start the next one. But for now, let's see how this first hour goes. Well, with that, we wrap up the session. In the end, I was able to complete those three hours of integration. A total of 36 five-minute exposures of this region of the sky. And what are my first conclusions regarding the use of this SV, Boni MK127 for deep sky astrophotography? I think it's not the ideal telescope for this purpose. As we already saw in the previous video, it's an excellent telescope for observation and planetary astrophotography. But when it comes to deep sky, it won't even come close to giving us the results that, for example, a good apochromatic refractor can provide. It's very difficult to get perfectly pinpoint stars, it's very difficult to achieve good focus, and if we also can't fit it with an automatic focuser, everything becomes even more complicated. However, I have to say that it's fun, and since the telescope comes with that 0.65x reducer, we can do some experiments taking advantage of that almost 1000mm focal length it offers. I have to say that I had fun during this session, and I think an interesting photo is going to come out of it. So I'll stay here doing some calibration shots, but I'll leave you now with the final result. <laughs>